Hello everyone. I am Mansoor Ahmad. I teach radiology at the University of Minnesota School of Dentistry. In this video, in about 5 minutes, let's learn how to describe features of a lesion on a radiograph. A good description of a lesion is critical for arriving at a correct diagnosis. Before we try to describe a lesion, it is essential that we know the normal anatomy and the variations of the normal anatomy. Without knowing the normal, we cannot describe the abnormal. The necessity of the knowledge of anatomy should never be underestimated. First, we have to describe the location of the lesion or lesions. How many lesions? One or more than one? Where is the lesion? Is it localized or generalized? Is it related to the crown or is it related to the root? Is this finding in one arch or both the arches? Is this lesion inside the bone or outside? Is the lesion superior or inferior to the mandibular canal? Once you have described the location and the number of the lesions, let's go to the second radiographic feature. Now you will describe the density of the lesion. The lesion may be radiolucent, which is dark on a radiograph. It may be radioopaque in shades of white. Or it can be mixed, both radioopaque and radiolucent. The density of the lesion is a critical clue for diagnosis. We should describe the size of the lesion. The best way to describe is in millimeters or in inches. This can be done on a CBCT scan. Please describe in all three orientations, cranial caudal, mesial distal, and buccal lingual. Because panoramic radiographs are always magnified and somewhat distorted, just provide an approximate size on a panoramic radiograph. Such as, the lesion is as big as the crown of a molar, or the lesion extends from the area of the second molar to the area of the first premolar and extends from the crest to the inferior alveolar canal. Some lesions, such as a cyst, can be circular or oval. Some lesions, such as a traumatic bone cyst, may scallop between the roots. Amyloblastoma can be multilocular. The shape of the lesion also provides a critical clue to the diagnosis. The border of the lesion is another critical clue to the diagnosis. Is the lesion well defined or poorly defined? Is the margin smooth or irregular? Malignancy and infection often have irregular margins. Is the lesion well corticated? Frequently, a cyst or a benign tumor is well corticated. Is the margin sclerosed? Is there a radiolucent band around the lesion? Or is the lesion blending to the neighboring structures? The more you describe, the closer you will be to the correct diagnosis. Some lesions may have internal contents or internal entities. If you see these internal entities, describe this. Are there calcifications? Is there a tooth inside the lesion? Finally, and very important, is to describe the effects of the lesion on the adjacent structures. Is the lesion expanding the cortical plates? Or is the lesion perforating the cortical plate or resorbing the adjacent roots? Are the neighboring teeth displaced? How about the sinus floor or the inferior alveolar canal? The effects on the adjacent structures are probably the most important clue to the diagnosis of a rare lesion. At the same time, also describe if some adjacent structures are generating the lesion, such as pulpal exposure leading to the periapical lesion. In review, these are the seven radiographic features to describe. Location Density Size shape, border, internal entity, and finally effects on the adjacent structures. You do not have to describe all these features in the order that I have presented. You may mix them up. 
Let's mix them up to remember them better. Ah, now I can remember them better. Border, location, entity, size, shape, effects, and density. Aha! Now I feel I'm blessed that I can remember all the seven radiographic features to describe. Thank you very much. In another video, I'll show you an example of writing a radiology note using these seven radiographic features. Hope to see you soon. Bye.